And now we're going to learn about the 24 elders. Revelation 11.16 And the four and twenty elders, which sat before God on their seats, fell upon their faces and worshipped God. And now for my spiritual interpretation of the twenty-four elders. We have seen outwardly the ministry of the two witnesses, people's response to their message, the witnesses lifted up into heaven, and their call to preach the kingdom of God coming on earth. Now in this verse, we will see what is taking place inwardly within the ministers. In order to unlock this verse, we need to use three keys. The first one is, this is inward, not outward. It is allegorical, and numbers have spiritual meaning only. We're not going to look at the numerical meaning of 24, but only its spiritual meaning. As we view this word, verse inwardly, it would be good to look at what Jesus said in Luke 17. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Neither shall they say, Lo here, or lo there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. If the kingdom of God is to come on earth, it must first come in the hearts of the people. This is where we will find the four and twenty elders. They are within us, and they have something to do with the way God created us and the work God has been doing in our lives. The twenty-four elders are in heaven. The twenty-four elders are within us because that heavenly realm is within us. Our allegorical key comes from some of the great Christian teachers of the third and sixth centuries. According to these early church fathers, men like Ambrose, St. Augustine, and Gregory the Great, the word men can represent certain minds. Therefore, an elder, being a man, can represent a certain mind. As we interpret spiritually the meaning of the number 24, we will see exactly what kind of mind this is. 24 is the number of divine governmental perfection. 12 is the number of governmental perfection on earth, as seen in the 12 tribes of Israel. 24 is the number of divine governmental perfection in heaven, the pattern of which can be seen in the 24 courses of the priestly service in the temple. If a mind is in divine governmental perfection, that's 24, then this is a spiritual mind. The spiritual mind is in complete submission to the will of God. Remember, we are not interpreting 24 for its numerical value but only for its spiritual meaning. Therefore, within the person is one spiritual mind, not twenty-four. Another indication as to the identity of the twenty-four elders is that they are seated in heaven. In Ephesians 2, 6, we read that God hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. This verse is speaking about the position of our spirit. In our spirit, we are seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus, even while our physical body is still living on earth. The position of sitting implies rest. Therefore, this is a mature spirit. This is a spirit that is entered into the rest of God, as the Holy Spirit urges us to do in Hebrews. Now I'm reading from Hebrews. There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. For he that is entered into his rest, he also hath ceased from his own works, as God did from his, his. Let us labor therefore to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. Putting this all together, we see in this verse an inward view of what it will be like spiritually in God's fully matured believers in the end times, when the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign for ever and ever. First, the kingdom comes in the spirit of individual believers, so that each believer is totally aligned with the will of God. When all believers come to this position, there will be total unity. They will be like the great army of the Lord described in the book of Joel. 
They shall run like mighty men, they shall climb the wall like men of war, and they shall march every one on his ways, and they shall not break their ranks, neither shall one thrust another. They shall walk every one in his path, and when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. They shall run to and fro in the city, they shall run upon the wall, they shall climb up upon the houses, they shall enter in at the windows like a thief. The earth shall quake before them, the heavens shall tremble, the sun and the moon shall be dark, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great, for he is strong that executeth his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible, and who can abide it? Here in Revelation we are shown a picture of a spirit that has come fully into the rest of God. This is the rest that the book of Hebrews encourages us to enter. And now I'll read from Hebrews 3. And to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believe not? So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. Therefore let us fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to fall short of it. Now that we understand that the twenty-four elders represent our spiritual mind that has come into the rest of God, we can continue with the rest of this verse that reveals more about our spiritual mind. They, that's it, fell upon their faces and worshipped God. The spiritual mind worships God continuously. This will be the activity of our spirit when we reach full maturity. It will be at rest and free to focus all its attention on God. It is seated with God and therefore is in God's presence. One cannot help but worship God when one is in His presence. The love that emanates from Him, His inimitable gentleness and sweetness, is so magnificent, all we want to do is worship. The more we worship Him, the stronger we feel His glorious presence. This is truly the greatest joy and fulfillment any human being could ever imagine. But it only comes when our labors have ceased and we enter into His rest. Until this rest comes, we are incapable of experiencing what the Spirit is feeling here. We may have experienced occasionally some semblance of this in some special circumstance, but not in this depth, and this is continual. The spiritual mind does not come and go from God's presence, it remains there. At this level of maturity we are able to feel this glorious sense of God's presence, and the feeling never leaves. I wanted to mention something that has really helped me keep worship going on inside continually, and that is listening to scripture songs. I want to recommend a website. It's called scripturesongsforworship.com. They have the most beautiful scripture songs I've ever heard. Everything is free. You can even download albums of, of uh, scripture songs absolutely free. As I bring this particular verse to a close, I'm going to state it again and then give my short, concise interpretation. And the four and twenty elders, which sat before God on their seats, fell upon their faces and worshipped God. And their spiritual minds in governmental perfection, that's twenty-four elders, which had come into rest, that sat, and abode in the presence of God, that is, before God, were continuously worshiping God and enjoying His presence. I'll state that again. And their spiritual minds in governmental perfection, which had come into rest and abode in the presence of God, were continuously worshiping God and enjoying His presence.